A huge warm welcome to our morning worship at St Peter's. I hope this finds you really well. Uh, I'm Alex, I'm the curate. As you will no doubt be aware, the church building is now closed for the duration of the lockdown. So our worship from now on is going to be filmed inside our various homes. You're going to see a number of St Peter's faces during our morning worship. Um, in a moment, Margaret is going to do a reading. Uh, Richard is doing a reflection. Pippa is going to be singing and then Ruth is going to lead us in prayer. And in fact, you can expect to see lots of different St Peter's faces featured in our worship over the next few weeks, one way or another. And maybe when all of this is over, you can expect to see a fairly substantial St Peter's bloopers reel as well. But before we start our worship, a couple of things to say. Uh, the first one is a huge thank you to everyone who has volunteered to support people by phone or to deliver shopping for people. Um, it's been a great uh, team effort across the church, so thank you for that. Um, and now we're over a week in. Those of you connected to St Peter's should have received at least one call from somebody. Um, if you don't think we've got your details, please do get in touch. We're really keen to all keep in contact with one another. Um, at this time. And if you'd like to speak to any member of the ministry team for any reason, please do get in contact. I'll make sure our contact details are underneath this video if you're watching on YouTube, um, or they're obviously on the website too. We're also starting something new today, um, which is that we're going to produce uh, an evening service. It will be a short service of night prayer or Compline, and you'll find it from 6.30pm every Sunday uh, on the church YouTube channel and also available on Facebook as well. If you'd like to join us for morning prayer, uh, the ministry team and others gather via Zoom at 9am every weekday morning and you'll find the details of how to dial into that on the church website. But for now, as we begin our worship, let's pray together. Lord God, you are always with us. You are with us in the day and in the night. You are with us when we're happy and when we're sad. You are with us when we're healthy and when we are ill, when we are peaceful and when we are worried. And you are with us now, whether we're watching together with others or on our own. We pray that we'll know your presence with us as we listen to the reading and the reflection, as we listen to the singing, as we pray together. Help us to remember that you love us and are with us in everything, today and this week. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of St John. Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. This is the word of the Lord.
Well, these are strange and unsettling times, aren't they? It's a Sunday morning, but here we are at home all week. The vast majority of us, I suppose, have been at home, possibly getting on with things or possibly finding that we're so distracted and so out of sorts that we can't settle to anything. It's a wonderful opportunity to, I don't know, start learning a new language or to sort out the sock drawer. And the week's been filled with other things, or worse still, it's been wasted. But in the natural world, which we're here in today, um, real progress is being made. If you've got a garden or you've managed to have a look at other people's front gardens when you're walking along the street, you may have noticed that the world is coming to life. Shrubs of, that have looked dead all winter are beginning to show green shoots of rebirth and daffodils are in their prime, or perhaps even a little bit beyond their prime, and the warm summer sun is bringing out the insects who are buzzing everywhere. Everything's waking up, everything's humming, everything's becoming alive. I wanted to say something about two aspects of life, one about this life and one about our lives in eternity. This present life is of great importance and it's absolutely not right to see it as some kind of waiting room for our lives to come. And the coronavirus outbreak, I think, has given us a perfect illustration of people showing us that in action, how important this life is. Half a million people have now signed up to volunteer with the national scheme to help with shopping and the delivery of medicines and to support people who must stay inside. And every local community has got more people volunteering to do the same things. Christians and non-Christians alike are loving their neighbours as themselves. And that's not to mention, of course, the medical professionals who are doing extraordinary things. Doctors and nurses and ancillary staff and social care people all working immense hours under immense stress in risky and hugely difficult circumstances. This truly is love in action, and Jesus told us that that's what this life is for. Within the St Peter's community, we're trying to make sure that everyone's looked out for and receives regular contact from someone familiar to them. If you think we may not have your contact details, please do email them to the church office, and the email address is on the church website, so that we can then link you up with someone you know, and they'll keep a lookout for you. So we're not in a waiting room, biding time ahead of eternal life. We're living life now. And at this time of crisis, it turns out that huge numbers have begun living out a life of love for others. So to turn to our reading today, Lazarus was a dear friend of Jesus, as indeed were Lazarus's sisters, Martha and Mary. Jesus learns that Lazarus is ill, but he declines initially to go and visit Lazarus a couple of days later, Jesus learns that Lazarus has died. He's moved to tears. He heads towards Bethany, which is just a couple of miles from Jerusalem, where Jesus' enemies are. So perhaps that's the reason why he doesn't straight away go to the tomb, but he meets with Martha and Mary some way from the tomb, where they acknowledge him as the Messiah. Well. Jesus then does go to the tomb, and you'll remember he instructs Lazarus, who's now been dead for four days, to walk out of the tomb, which he does. Jesus has restored his friend to life, this life, because this life is of great importance. Now, those of you who know the story well will know that it's full of symbolism. Lazarus' death and resurrection prefigure what's going to happen to Jesus just a week or so later when Jesus is put on trial and crucified, and later he is resurrected. The high priest actually gets everything completely upside down. The high priest is already fed up with Jesus, and in his view, Jesus raising some of them to life deserves the death penalty. So he resolves to start the process which leads to Jesus' trial before Pilate. I just wanted to look at one verse of this rich story that is, Jesus' statement to Martha that I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. 
Well, this is one of the seven famous I am statements in John's Gospel, and it's central to John's understanding of what Jesus is. In this I am statement, Jesus says that he has the power to conquer death. Well, in three weeks' time, we'll celebrate the moment when Jesus proves that in his own resurrection, Jesus chooses life over death, and he shows that eternal life can follow death. He invites us to make the same choice. But we mustn't get too far ahead in the church year. It's not quite Easter yet. Even so, all around us, life is bursting forth after the winter's death. So I've had a look round our garden, and Peter and Dee have taken a look at the frog spawn in their lovely pond. Here is some new life. Dear God, we come to you in prayer, learning together how to live in a different season. A season that reminds us of what we need. We need each other, Lord. We pray for our neighbours, family and friends and we thank you for them. Wherever they are, next door, in another country, online or on the phone. Thank you for all the many conversations we've had we especially pray for those who don't feel very well or are worried about others, those who are sad and those who mourn. We pray that you will be what they need. A season that reminds us of what we need, our need for our community, for those who protect us, lead us and care for us in all sorts of ways. Thank you for each of them those trained and volunteers, we pray that you will be what they need. In a season that reminds us of our needs, we remember our need as a global family. We pray for those places dear to our hearts around the world, where communities just like ours are finding those to hold on to as we walk the road to recovery. And in this season, we remember today our own need 
for you, Lord. Maker, creator, saviour and healer. We stand on your promise to be with us. Thank you that you know us inside out. Please help us to trust in you day by day. May we see you in the kindness, service and smiles of others this week. Thank you that you invited us to bring our needs to you. In your name we pray. Amen. We're coming now to the end of our worship this morning. Do check out night prayer this evening from 6.30 and morning prayer 9am every weekday morning. And please stay in touch, stay well, look after yourselves this week. Let's finish with a Celtic prayer of blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.